Hi, this is a Delaware OBGYN resident lecture series, a series of lectures for our residents here at Christiana in Newark, Delaware, and I'm Heidi Yoon. I'm a fourth year resident and I'm here to summarize the ACOG Committee Opinion 611, Methods for Estimating Due Date, October 2014. This is in preparation for the Summary of Committee Opinion 688, Management of Suboptimally Dated Pregnancies, March of 2017, which will follow in a few days. Many of the diagnoses of abnormal conditions in pregnancy and many of the therapeutic interventions we offer are highly dependent on knowing the gestational age of the fetus, whether it is diagnosing IUGR or offering antenatal corticosteroids. This makes the dating of the pregnancy one of the most important aspects of prenatal care. Committee Opinion 688 deals with the management decisions involving a pregnancy with suboptimal dating. Before we get into those, let's step back to Committee Opinion 611 from October of 2014, Method for Estimating Due Date. Dating the pregnancy typically begins by ascertaining the first day of the last period. Adding 280 days to that assumes that a woman with regular 28-day cycles probably ovulated and conceived 14 days after that. A history of longer cycles, like 35 days, suggests she ovulated and got pregnant on day 21. Since the luteal phase, after ovulation is consistently 14 days in most people. Therefore, seven days should be added to the EDC. If the pregnancy resulted from assisted reproductive technology, use that information. Transfer of a day five embryo implies that conception occurs five days before the transfer date when you're using your wheel. Because only 50% of people accurately recall their period, and because one study found that 40% of women had their EDC change based on a first trimester scan, it's been decided that an ultrasound before 22 weeks is required to be considered optimally dated. The decision is a lot more complicated than that, but that's the bottom line. An ultrasound done at less than 22 weeks that either confirms or reassigns the EDC is what it takes. All right, step one, clinical assessment of the reliability of the LMP date based on the data from the last menstrual period. The implication here is that one, the date is recalled accurately, like written down on a calendar, and two, the clinical history suggests that date suggests that ovulation happened 14 days later. Clinical data that would suggest that the LMP does not reliably predict when ovulation occurred includes conception while on oral contraceptives, breastfeeding, delivery or miscarriage in the previous three months, a history of irregular periods, or that the last period was atypical. If these criteria are not met, the LMP is probably not informative to use and should be disregarded. Assuming the criteria are met, that is our starting point. Okay, let's talk about when the EDC is confirmed and when it's reassigned. In very general terms, the date or scan allow discrepancy range varies according to the trimester. Think of the first trimester as up to 16 weeks and the second as up to 28 weeks. The range for the first, second, and third trimesters is one, two, and three weeks. Fortunately for accuracy, but unfortunately for memorizing purposes, the first parts of the first and second trimesters have slightly tighter ranges. So for the first trimester, it's five days up to nine weeks, and then seven days for the rest of that trimester up to 16 weeks. For the second trimester, it's 10 days up to 22 weeks, and then 14 days for the rest of that trimester up to 28 weeks. The third trimester is still 21 days. Here's an example. Patient remembers her LMP has regular 28-day cycles and gets an EDC of December 1st. Ultrasound at 13 weeks suggests EDC of December 9th. There's a difference of 8 days and 13 weeks. More than 7 days at 13 weeks means change to December 9th. Here's another. Patient remembers her LMP and gets an EDC of December 1st. However, her periods have been irregular probably because she's breastfeeding. The ultrasound at 9 weeks suggests an EDC of December 5th a four-day difference. Since the time of ovulation is not reliably predictable with that clinical history, throw out the LMP date and base the EDC on the early ultrasound, December 5th. So you may say, does four days really matter? Maybe not, 
But as you know, early in pregnancy, we acknowledge that assessment of the EDC is not exact and even imply that being exact doesn't really matter. But then a few months later, people behave as if it's exact to the hour, like she's not a candidate for steroids until tomorrow at midnight, or she can't have a scheduled repeat C-section on Friday, she doesn't turn 39 weeks until Saturday. Now I believe we need to stick to the rules once we make them. That's the only way research that's done can be applied to the way we manage patients. So follow these guidelines to come up with the best obstetrical estimate, and that's the best we can do. Be on the lookout for the next video on how to manage the suboptimally dated pregnancy.